Dear class minus, good afternoon all of you. Now today we will start a new chapter, Archimedes principle. So before we go to the Archimedes principle, okay, about the laws, about all the laws, the law of rotation, you know. So first of all, we will understand about the term arc thrust and buoyancy. Arc thrust and buoyancy. Now actually, arc thrust means the upward force. It is arc thrust means a force actually, and the upward force exerted by the liquid on the immersed part of a body. We call it as arc thrust. Example: You take a bucket of water, take a bucket, fill the bucket with water, and put some lighter object. You take a mug or a jug, just put it into the bucket, which is filled with water. Now that mug will remain on the surface. It doesn't get sink. It doesn't go under the water. Or so neither it the half portion of the mug neither it remains under the water. So that means the mug just remain on the surface of the water. That means it floats. Now what you do is that now you try to push the mug under the water. Okay. So you. Try to push with your fingers, okay, and put it down, okay, and lift the mug. You just put your hand under the water inside the water along with the mug, okay, and you just lift your hand. What what you also you will also tap the mug. As soon as you remove your hand from that bucket of water, the mug will also rise up. So what makes the mug to rise from the water? So that is the upthrust. Okay, that means the water is exerting force on the mug. So mug is an object. Okay, so this water is exerting some force towards the mug. So therefore, the mug immediately you will withdraw your hand, the mug will come up. That means because this happens because of the upthrust. Okay, but. But if you keep on now, you just put your, uh, you just press or uh, you immerse that uh, mug under the water. The two forces will be acted. Okay, the downward force which has been given by your body and the upward force given by the water or by the fluid. But as long as you keep your fingers intact with the mug under the water, okay, the mug will remain under the water. But some sort of force is pushing. Your hands upward. Just uh, you, you can try it at home also. This one. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this is some uh, some sort of experiment. Yeah? Okay, you just put the mug under the water. Okay, and the the mug try to push you up. And what makes that mug to push? Up thrust. That means the force exerted by the water. And because of that upward force, your hands. That means your your hands will also get pushed away or pushed up. But but when you put it under the when you put that mug under the water, okay, the mug keep on remaining under the water itself. Because in that case, what will happen here? Though the, the downward force you are giving towards the mug and the upward force given by the water, it becomes equal. So when they become equal, so that means they remain. The, the mug still remain, the mug remain under the water immersed. Okay, so these things will happen. Then again, another example. It is very easy to carry a stone or to lift, you say, a lift a stone under the water. Okay, you take a stone, okay, and the stone has to be under the water. You just try to lift the stone under the water. It becomes very easy to lift a stone under the water than in here. Because in here, the gravitational force, okay, and that gravitational force is, is the weight. It is the weight of the object, okay. And the uh, to carry the stone on the air becomes more heavy than the same stone when you lift under the water. It becomes lighter, okay. So that is because of the upward the the water is giving of upward force towards the stone. So if you want to lift the stone under the water, immersed in the in the water, you find it very light to lift it. So these are the examples, okay. Now let us now. To the upward force. Now the upward force, just now I have discussed about it, upward force. 
the upper force experienced by a body okay body can be a stone mug whatever it can be experienced by a body when part of your body immerses in a fluid that means that body can be either completely you like immerse in a in a water in a fluid or partly you immerse it so that means that body has to be has to be present inside a, in the water not in the air but it has to be in water either it can be partly immersed after it is uh, immersed or it is immersed completely okay so now this upward force we call it as the up thrust or known as the buoyant force up thrust is also known as the buoyant force and the phenomenon is known as the buoyancy okay and this phenomenon okay in which uh, the, the the fluid will access the upward force to the to the body when it is partly or completely immersed in the fluid okay that phenomenon is known as the buoyancy and the up thrust is known as the uh, sorry and the upward force is known as the up thrust or the buoyant force also related as fb okay fb we call it as a buoyant force or the up thrust now now let us come to the unit since uh, this up thrust is a is a force so therefore the si unit and the cgs unit of up thrust will be same as that of force the cgs unit of force is dyne similarly the cgs unit of up thrust will also be dyne the si unit of force is newton now the si unit of up thrust will also be newton okay and when we come to the gravitational unit the gravitational unit of uh up thrust will also be SI unit is kilogram force and the CGS unit of uh, of uh, gravitational unit of CGS in the CGS unit it is uh, gram force. Okay. Now the next one is there. That is now uh, let us come to the to the uh, immersed. Now when a body is immersed in a fluid, when a body is immersed in a fluid, the body will experience two forces. There. Okay. The body will you know that the body is immersed in a fluid. The body will exert some. Up, upward force that is the buoyant force we know that but when the body is immersed in the fluid the body has two forces one force is already there up, up first and other force is also there that is a downward force okay one is downward force other one is the upward force and this downward force is the weight of the body okay this downward force is the weight of the body and the upward force is the up first okay and this weight of the body the that is downward force we call it as The upward force is the buoyant force. We write it as Fb. Now, this downward force will act vertically downwards. Okay, and it is the weight. This is the this is the W. That is the the downward force is the weight of the body. We act vertically downwards, and other one is the force of the the force acted by the liquid on a body which acts vertically upwards. Okay, and which is denoted the downward force denoted as W and the upward force denoted as Fb. Now the next one is here. Let us come to the cases of buoyancy. Different cases of buoyancy. The three conditions are here of buoyancy. Number one is the number one condition is here. If W, that means if the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force, W is greater than F B. Number one condition. Okay, W is greater than than F B. That means W is the weight of the body is more than the up thrust. So if the weight of the body be more than the up thrust, what will happen? The body will sink. Okay, that means the body will immerse inside the liquid or into into the fluid. So in that case, what will happen is that the resultant force, the total force, resultant force is the total force. Now the resultant force we calculate as W minus F B. Now why I am doing that? Because W is greater, the weight of the body is greater. Than the buoyant force, so I can write, I can solve that weight of the body minus buoyant force. So W minus F B. Therefore, the resultant force acts upon the body in the downward direction. So that in that case, what will happen? The resultant force will act in the downward direction. So when the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force, then the resultant is the resultant force, the total force. The resultant force will be weight of the body minus. Buoyant force, and in that case, what will happen? The weight of the body acts downwards. So, if the weight of the body acts downwards, finally the body will reach to the bottom of the container or the bottom of the vessel. Number one condition. Second condition is there. If W one, 
sorry, if W is equal to FB, then you see the weight of the body is equal to buoyant force. Weight of the body is equal to buoyant force. So in that case, what will happen is that the resulting force will become zero. Total force will become zero because both of them are like the same value. That means both are same. The weight of the body is also same. The buoyant force, the upward force is also same. So that that means the values are same here. So in that case, the total force, or the resultant force, we call it. That resultant force will become zero. So when the resultant force will become zero, then the body remains floating on the liquid. Okay, the body keeps on floating on the liquid. That is the first one. That is the second condition. Is the second condition. Okay. So in that case, what will happen here? The body will will remain floating here. Next one is here. The third part is. If W is less than buoyant force, that means if the weight of the body is less than the buoyant force, so therefore the resultant force will be FB minus W. Because since FB is greater, buoyant force is greater, so I can subtract the bigger value to smaller value. Okay. So if uh, if the W is if the weight of the body is less than the uh, buoyant force, then the resultant force will be Buoyant force minus W. That means F B minus W. So in that case, what will happen is that now the body acts in an upward direction. So that means in that case, what will happen here? The the body that means the the force will act in an upward direction. That means since the weight of the body is greater, the weight of the body is greater than the it acts vertically downwards. Now here it acts vertically upward since the buoyant force is greater. So since the buoyant force is greater, therefore the body will rise up. When the body is immersed in a liquid, now the body it rises up because the buoyant force is more. Weight of the body is less. Buoyant force is more. So when the buoyant force is more, therefore the body will rise up. Okay. So these are the three cases of buoyancy. That means the weight of the body is greater than greater than buoyant force. Second one is the weight of the body is equal to buoyant force. Third one is the weight of the body is less than the buoyant force. So these are the cases. These are the condition of a uh, of the two things here. One is the What will happen to the weight of the body? What is the condition of the weight of the body and the buoyant force depending upon these cases? Okay. Now next one, let us come to the properties. Okay. Three properties are there. Number one property is larger the volume of the body submerged, greater is the upper crust. So that means more the volume of the body, larger the volume of the body is immersed in a fluid or in a liquid, greater will be the upper crust. Okay, so let us consider is that you take a a small pot, okay, a small size pot, okay, when you immerse in a fluid, okay, or you can immerse in a liquid. So, and when you try to when you press it down, when you immerse the uh, when you uh, when you try to immerse that, okay, uh, cork inside the water, the upward force will be less. That means the lesser upward force will be. But if you take the bigger or the larger cork or the larger body, if you take, and if you try to immerse that body under the water, okay, the upward force will be more. That means more the force will be acting on your fingers, and more that force will push your finger, your hand upward. Other one is here, more the density, okay, more the density, greater will be the the upward force. That means more the density, greater will be the upward force. So that means let us consider an iron nail. An iron nail they sink in water, but they float in mercury. Now why it happens? Okay, now the iron nail it sinks in water. Why it sinks in water? Because the density of iron nail is more than the density of water, so therefore it sinks. Again, the iron nail the same iron nail, but it floats in a mercury. Why it floats? Because the upward thrust is more. Because the greater the density, more will be the upward thrust. That means the density of the mercury is more. So since the density of the mercury is more, and how many times the density of mercury is more? Thirteen point six times more than the density of water. So this density of mercury is more. Therefore, the the upward thrust will also be more. So therefore, when the upward thrust will be more, what will happen? The uh, iron nail. It rises. That means it floats in the mercury, where it sinks in the water. And third one is the larger the value of acceleration due to gravity, 
greater is the power thrust. Larger the value of z, small letter z, z stands for acceleration due to gravity. So uh, larger the value of acceleration due to gravity, greater will be the power thrust. So these are the three conditions, these are three factors of power thrust. One is the larger the volume, greater will be the power thrust. Greater the density, larger the density, greater will be the power thrust. And more the value of z, greater will be the power thrust.